Hey guys, and welcome to The Max Life. We are glad to have you here, and today I want to show y'all a couple of items that I think you should have on hand if we found ourselves in a catastrophe, and we know at this point in time in life that literally at any moment we could find ourselves in a situation where we need some emergency supplies. Now, why do we do this? Is it because we fear? It is not. We do this because we are aware that anything can happen at any point in time. And if we have simple items on hand, it will keep us from having to worry when we're in that situation because we have already prepared. I have no fear. I have no worry. If something were to happen, I have plenty of things on hand. I won't say that it will be completely smooth sailing if we found ourselves without power, without water, without food, without grocery store accessibility, without gas, etc. Y'all get my point. Because I have prepped when that time comes, if I find myself in a situation, whatever the situation may be, I won't have to worry about it because I've already prepped with some things on hand that will make days much easier for my family. I have a table full of some sections that I have set aside upstairs. Some is in the attic. Some is in the upstairs extra room. Some is right here in my kitchen and some is over in my pantry. I have this broken down into a couple of different sections that I'm going to talk to y'all and go over with thoroughly so that you guys can start. If you've already started putting some preps up, awesome. We're going to go over some very basic stuff that you should have on hand in case there was ever an emergency situation that you found yourself in. Okay, y'all, one of the most important things is what sustains life. That is water. Now, I just have a little packet of water down here, but I will tell you that we have many water storage options that obviously full of water, I can't move. So even if you have to buy bottled water, some type of water you can put up. The next wonderful thing is filters. This is actually a life straw. There are a couple of different options, but just know you cannot sustain life without water. Your number one thing that you should have on your left is options for water and ways to filter water. There are tons of options out there. Y'all do your research. Just know water should be number one priority on your list. And if you have water, let's jump into the next one. Most of y'all have probably already guessed it, but yes, food is so important. A long time ago, we began our journey buying freeze-dried foods. Now, this is actually from a company called Legacy. Quickly moved on to freeze-drying our own. This is taco soup that I've had up since 1023. It was one of the ones on top. And pepper mixes from 1023 as well. I have totes and totes and totes of these because as you see, they can package in these Mylar bags and they lay and stack very easily. So having food on hand is also very important, but what good is it going to do you with freeze dried food if you do not first have water? So keeping water on hand, you can go days without food. You cannot go days without water. So water is number one. You will have to have water. You will also have to have water to rehydrate your food, whether it's dehydrated food goods that you have. Some of them are edible without water. Some of them are not. Some of your freeze-dried foods are also edible without water, but some of them are not, which sends me to my second foods that I want to talk about, and that is canned foods. Now, here I just brought off potatoes, pork, ground pork, English peas. Some people call them sweet peas and a fat source. This is lard from our pigs. All of this was raised on our farm. If you do not have that option where you're not able to produce enough food to can and you know how to can, utilize that skill and take your food 
that you maybe find in bulk sale, you know, whatever that looks like, and put those foods up because there may come a day where you have to run to that shelf and grab some food off to feed your family. With that being said, moves me into my next point, fire. Ways to start fire is very, very important. Now, I have a way to start a fire. I also have a small buddy heater right here beside me because if you live in an area where it's really, really cold, heat source will also be very important up there in the priority list for sure. So having ways to light fire, fire sources that includes fuel, as well which leads me right into my next category which is probably one of my favorites if i had to be honest and that is some type of herbs medicinal herbs now on hand i have rosemary this is ground up kumquats that i would utilize for vitamin c this is chamomile mullein dried raspberry leaves comfrey this is garlic and onion cough syrup that I infused in with the honey. I also have some tinctures on hand. This is goldenrod. This is wild lettuce. Wild lettuce is wonderful for pain. This is a homemade fever reducer that I made. It has raspberry leaves, chamomile, elderflower and leaf, catnip, and rosemary. Wonderful way to induce sweating, which will decrease fevers. And of course, another immune booster. This is echinacea that I tinctured a long time ago. So you see that I have all these things on hand and your herbs, whether you're growing them fresh or whether you're doing like me, growing them fresh and taking some, dehydrating those or freeze drying if you have that option, which can even be as easy as, as no cost, putting in a brown paper sack, throwing them in the trunk of your car and letting them dry that way in the summer. Just don't do garlic and onions. You'll regret that. Say you start having these things on hand, you're not exactly sure what goldenrod will do. Here is a wonderful thing next on my list, having books on hand. Here's a great book called Plant Medicine, The Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook. Here's another book, Complete Encyclopedia book of herbs another wonderful book to have on hand and my absolute favorite y'all have heard me talk about this book a lot the lost book of herbal remedies by dr nicole apalian wonderful wonderful book to have on hand so all of these herbs unless you've already studied them know how to grow them put them up and use them having books on hand is like the key to being able to use these appropriately for your family if herbs are not your thing, I am going to tell you some other things to have on hand because food and water and heat and your health is key to surviving when elements are not wonderful to be in. So let's jump into this right now. Okay, y'all, I have a lot on hand right here that I want to jump in and talk to y'all about real quick. Sterilization, cleaning the skin. So I have some alcohol, also have some homemade skin salve that I made. Always keep this, this back for emergencies. Anything like Neosporin, anything like that that you can put on your skin if you get scrapes, cuts, splinters, anything like that. You really have to watch for infection. I also have different types of wraps. So this is more of a gauze wrap. This is more of a wrap that will keep your gauze wraps that are directly on your skin in place without them moving and sliding around. I also have this wonderful little product here. Now, I am not suggesting that you guys use Vet Bond on your skin. I'm just telling you that we use Vet Bond here in my house. This is very similar to what the hospitals would refer to as Thermabond. So, I have had to use this multiple times. If we get a cut that I cannot keep together, Dermabond. So think somewhere along the lines of super glue. Now, I don't know how I feel about any of the glues being on my skin, but if I found myself in a situation where I had a cut that I could not get to keep together, it will take longer to heal. Hence, there is more of a risk of that to get infected. So you want to close that up if at all possible. Some of your natural herbs like yarrow are wonderful for those type things. 
not only infection, but also bleeding as well. But if you're not thinking along the herbal side, here are some things to have on hand that are, you can very easily get access to to put up for an emergency situation. And if you found yourself needing some type of medical attention, you would have these things on hand. Now, here are some other things to think about. This is a cold pack where all you have to do is squeeze this. It releases coldness. Now you have to remember an ice pack won't work because you don't have electricity. So all of your ice is probably going to be melted. So this is a wonderful thing to have on hand. I also have some that heat as well. Now bleeding is obviously a main concern too and if you haven't studied up on the herbal remedies to know which herbs will help increase platelets to get to the site very quickly to cause clotting, there are these things called quick clot. These would be wonderful to have on hand. Again, they're easily accessible to get. You also should have something on hand like tourniquet wraps, be sure before you begin to use these type things, whether you go to YouTube and learn specifically how to use them or refer to books, make sure that you know how to use those things beforehand because you don't want to find yourself in an emergency situation and think, I've never even opened this out of the package. I don't know how to use it. So coming from a medical background, I don't need to open mine, but if you ever found yourself in a situation, the last thing you want to be doing is playing with these when sometimes seconds count. So learn how to use those things before a situation occurs. You can never really have too many wraps. I have all different types of skincare products. Other things that you want to have on hand if you have funds to do this, this wonderful thing to have on hand is a glucometer. Now with these, you can check someone's blood sugar, glucose, if you're not already a diabetic or don't have have any diabetics in your family, you still may encounter a situation where you need to check somebody's blood sugar. So it's a wonderful thing to have on hand. Also a pulse ox, what it's referred to, it does just that. Checks your pulse and your oxygen level. Wonderful thing to have on hand in case you need to check heart rate or to check to see how well someone is breathing. Now, this is the EpiPen. We do not have any anaphylactic reactions in our house that we know of. It doesn't mean that it won't ever happen. So we have an EpiPen on hand just in case we or someone that we know or would be close to were with us to have an anaphylactic reaction. I have an EpiPen that I can use life-saving tool for anaphylactic reactions. And last but not least that I'm gonna talk about for basic emergency supplies is having a respirator and filters on hand. If you ever needed to use those, obviously we have seen major fires in the recent years in the food industry major catastrophes with train derailments that has released toxins on the land, in the air. We have already, y'all, we have already seen all these things happen. So having these type things on hand in your medical emergency supply is a wonderful idea. Now, unfortunately, I do not have time to cover all of the grounds of medical emergencies. However, having some basic supplies on hand is the key here, including medications that you may take every day, if your doctor or even pharmacy could coordinate together and get you at least a half month supply of those for you to put up just in case something were to happen. Sometimes they will do that. If not and all else fails, I have a company I want you to know about right now. I have pulled out my Jace case. So Jace Medical offers a wonderful line of emergency antibiotics. This stays downstairs with me in case I need to pull it out for any reason. Now, there are basic antibiotics in here. It also comes with a reference guide as well. So your Jace case comes with basic antibiotics. And the other amazing thing about this company is they have began to package add-ons. Now what I have right here is Zofran. Again, if there is any way that we can avoid these medications, yes. If I find myself in a situation where I can't easily access my herbs or something is not working for the current situation, I always have this for backup. And one thing I will tell y'all about us, because we have been doing this for a really, really long time, is we have backups to our backups because it's all about redundancy, not keeping all of your eggs in one basket. But as far as starting off as a basic package, 
this is a wonderful way to go. I know with my Jace case, the things that I have had to use out of here is because we always end up needing something on a weekend. If I cannot treat anything at home, you know it always happens on a weekend, which is where I have found myself going to my Jace case and using the things in here for those situations because that is what it is for. Now I want to move on to some other very, very basic things to have on hand. The first one would be you have no lights, right? Oil lamps are a wonderful way to alleviate the stress of not being able to see or get around your house. Candles, just remember these are open flame items. You would have to be very, very careful with those because fires obviously is an issue. My next suggestion would be something along the line of solar. Now this is actually a solar alarm and I have this because we have self-defense plans already in place and guys, we will get to that in just a minute, but I don't wanna jump the gun too much. But I brought this out to just show you that they make solar almost everything. So some solar lights, you could very easily put those out around your house and be able to have lights at night when you did not have electricity, which also leads me to the next product that we have used, and that is a solar power generator. Now, obviously, there are going to be some things that you may want to run on a generator. We have two different types. We do have a gas and we do have a solar. If you have the option to do that, that is wonderful. Pick which one would be best for your family and go with that. This is very basic setup that we have on hand if I needed to charge my cell phone, if I needed to charge something else that was really, really small. I have a battery bank essentially to do that with solar panels, so that is a great option to have on hand if you do not have electricity. Another thing that sometimes people tend to forget about is, yes, seeds. Now, there are some things that will grow and produce very, very quickly, kale, lettuces, those things tend to produce and come on up and can feed your family. Some things take a little bit longer. However, knowing that you have seeds on hand, our seeds come from survival garden seeds. You guys have heard me share. Actually, one of the very last videos that you guys seen was when we met with the owner, Jason, from Survival Garden Seeds. And we were able to talk with him about his company, find out why he started it, why is he doing what he does, you know, all of the good stuff. So to have a pre-package, this is the Homesteader package those 50 heirloom seeds all of these seeds y'all are also non-gmo but they have a uh, farmer's package which is a little bit smaller and they also have a seed vault which is very big and has lots and lots of food so what you're saying essentially the biggest product which is a step up from this is a hundred dollars y'all what you can grow in that seed package for a hundred dollars will provide you thousands of dollars worth of food so if you look at it and you say you know what well i don't know if i want to spend a hundred dollars on food just remember even the smaller packages like the homesteader package and the farmer's package the seed vaults the amount of money that you're putting into those seeds is going to feed you for a really long time i'm also a huge fan of their medicinal package as well just knowing that I have those things on hand really is a peace of mind because i always have seeds that i can always plant to always grow my own food this is an option that might not be wonderful for all of y'all well the knife is so having a durable knife you can do so much with knives you want to keep a knife a good knife on hand fishing poles obviously you want to keep some fishing poles on hand there are always lakes rivers streams that you can go to for public fishing so you want to keep a tackle box good fishing pole on hand so that if fishing is an option for you in your area obviously you can grab those things and go bows as well now we actually have two different variety bows i don't shoot a bow but my husband and son do shoot bows and the thing with bows is practice so you obviously wouldn't want to get a bow and try to kill an animal if you've never shot a bow before so that is something to keep in mind in the back of your head if i get a bow will i have time to practice with it but when push comes to shove 
Obviously, having hunting equipment as backup is a wonderful option to have when you're preparing for any type of emergency or catastrophe. And last but not least is this right here. Now, this will provide you with two different options, whether you're hunting or somebody comes to cause harm, obviously you would need a way to protect yourself. But this also goes back to the same basic principles that I just said. You would not want to have this on hand without practice. So if you do not have an outdoor shooting range that you could go to to practice, you would want to find an indoor shooting range, get someone to help you and teach you how to use these things because it is crucial that you know how to do that. You obviously wouldn't want to have this on hand and not have practice with it because it would do you no good in a situation when you needed to know how to do it. So it is one of those things, again, last minute, you cannot say, okay, I'm in a situation and I need these things but I don't know how to use them or work them. So prevent that from happening by learn how to practice. So I hope that gave you some basic ideas of ways to prepare for any type of emergency or catastrophes that you could have some basic things on hand. Now guys, I pulled from my pantry and from our emergency supplies to put some things out on the table so that I could talk to you with. Obviously now I have to clean up my mess, but I wanted to show y'all that. I have areas set aside and, and designated for food, water, protection, books, and medical because I have built these up over the years. So please don't think that by next week, you guys could have all of this unless you've already started and you've continued working on that. That is absolutely wonderful. But please don't think if you do not have anything prepared that all of this happens overnight because it doesn't. But taking one step in the right direction is always the way to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always, God bless and happy homesteading y'all.